What's going on up there? What's going on up there? Goes. Well, well, well. Looks like a scrawny runt trying to sneak into our flock. Sneak? You call that sneaking? I heard them coming all the way in from down. Thought you were going to fleece some shepherds, did you? Maybe we ought to take the shears to you instead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, I'm not looking for sheep or trouble. I'm looking for a flock of swans. Swans? Swans. You know, birds. Oh, swans, of course. We should have known. Everybody comes here when they want swans. <laughs> oh, <laughs> next, next you'll be telling us you're some sort of wizard off to fly away with them birds. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, wizard? Wizard? You wouldn't happen to be the great wizard that Fleece was telling us about, would you know? Fleece? He is sort of dressed like a wizard. I don't know. He doesn't look very powerful to me. Me neither. I say we don't let him by until we know for sure. Come on then, wizard. Let's see some magic. Uh, or else... <laughs> ah! It might help to point at something first. There's nobody better at stealth than a shepherd. Aye, and you'll have to do better than that to get past us. Come on, lads. He's had enough. Let him go. Some kind of wizard, eh? Don't trip on your robe, little wizard. Get on, you lazy bunch of yous. Back to work. I can barely hear what they're saying. I trust your excellency is pleased with our progress? That all depends on how far this sphere can help me see. Four hours, most assuredly. Uh, perhaps six, with a bit of luck. Only six hours? But I expressly requested eight. Every sphere is unique, Bishop. It is impossible to accurately predict how well this sphere will perform. I need at least eight hours. Eight hours, Master Crucible. See to it.
Huh! A glass bell. I wonder what will happen if. I'm dizzy. Ah, look! Who are you, lad? And just what do you think you're doing up here? I, I'm not sure. I just rang the bell and well, I. Well, I'm sorry, but you're not supposed to be here. Step back under the lens, please. This is a restricted area. No visitors allowed. Good day, sir. I guess I'm not supposed to go up there. Stop her. Over there. I don't believe this. Looking for trouble, are you? You're certainly about to find it. He'll not be the only one in trouble if Crucible finds him up here. Not to mention what will happen if we get behind schedule. Listen here, lad. We have secret work to do and not much time to do it. Do you understand what secret means? Yes, but it's very important that I get... Good. Please step over to the lens. Now, stupid brat, you said it. Hmm, those two are going to be a bit of a problem. Welcome to Crystal Guard, stranger. I'm Master Goodmo, 31st in the Noble Guild of Glassmakers. And who might you be? My name is Bobbin. Bobbin Threadbear of the, um, Noble Guild of Weavers. A weaver! Tell me, is it true that to peer beneath a weaver's hood brings instant agonizing death? I honestly don't know. Nobody's ever tried it with me. You have such a wonderful view of the sky here. Have you noticed a flock of swans flying this way? Swans? Swans. You know, birds. Yes, yes, swans! <laughs> no, I haven't heard of any swan sightings. Uh, look around to your heart's content, weaver threadbare. Hmm? And remember, if you break it, you buy it. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
Near this spot, Lucen Bottleblow, founder of the noble guild of glassmakers, attained his final clarity. That's beautiful. I've never seen anything sparkle like that. Not even the long tapestry. What kind of glass is it? It was carved from a single crystal of diamond. But I thought you were glass makers. No, we are, we are. A dear boy. This is none other than the famous Chromax conundrum wrought by our distinguished founder, Lucent Bottleblow. His works once filled an entire museum, you know. And that was before the great dragon arrived in 7342. She blew through this city like a torch, melting and breaking our finest works, plundering our museums and treasuries until we had almost nothing left. It was awful, just terrible, really a miserable time. Uh, even Bottleblow's greatest masterpiece, the first scribe. Sphere was lost forever. But you still have the conundrum. And a lucky thing, too. It was on loan to the Guild of Vintners at the time. It is the sole remaining example of our founder's transcendent genius. But I'm still curious. Why is it diamond instead of glass? We've no idea. No idea at all. That's the conundrum, you see. Dragon went with Bottle Blow's other treasures. What's going on up there? Hmm, I wonder, did it work? Only one way to find out. Our esteemed Bishop Mandible cuts quite a figure, doesn't he? I don't doubt the Crucible's getting tired of bowing and scraping to him. Why would the clerics want a scrying sphere anyway? I thought they didn't believe in the future. Yeah, your guess is as lucid as mine, Flute. But Crucible appears to think that they're up to no good again. Then why would he do business with them at all? Let alone sell them a sphere. Well, you know, Crucible, he'd sell his own mother's spectacles if he thought there was a profit in it. And the clerics are paying off in cash. Which should keep us in the clear for years to come. Still, I'm certainly pleased that Crucible's not taking any chances. This scythe might become very useful if our friend the bishop has been less than transparent with us. Ouch! Yes, very useful indeed.
scythe is even sharper than a weaver's spindle. That thread's too high for me. That scythe is even sharper than a weaver's spindle.